All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is YouTube. This is Pastor Dow, and um, and this is my wife, Sister Carol. And, and of course, you know, many of you who are familiar with us, you know Sister Carol. Sister Carol is, does not like being in the camera. Matter of fact, she doesn't want to have anything to do whatsoever at all um, with being out in the forefront. Uh, she's a woman of a, a, a humble, she's a meek and quiet spirit. But this morning I told her, I said, well, you're going to do a video with me this morning because I had my dear brother and friend, Pastor Fox, send me a video this morning. And there's this guy that has um, laid accusations that has said that Sister Carol said this, Sister Carol said that, and he's got a literal approval from Sister Carol, which I will let you see here in just a second. As a matter of fact, I'll let you see it right now, and then I'll let my wife, Sister Carol, come back here and make a comment. Uh, on this particular video um, after you view what he has to say, okay? Pastor Plumline here, and I was invited by uh, Pastor Dowd's wife, Sister Carol, to come down and visit her and uh, her husband preach one Sabbath. So I'm on my way, and I'm going to be booking the ticket pretty soon here. And then I'm just going to fly down, stay in Nashville for a couple days for the weekend, and then uh, I'll get a taxi into Straightway. And I'm going to sit beside uh, Pastor Dow's wife, Sister Carol, and uh, have a little fun, too. Stuff like this happens all the time. You'll get people that have met us maybe once or twice, um, like like this, this self-proclaimed pastor, Pastor Ron Wittenbach, or somebody by the name of Kathy Smith. Um, and I can, I can drop names all day long. These friends lunatics. And that's exactly what they are. Some were eight, somehow, I don't understand. You know, you can be, you people can be in Christianity for years. And they can lie to you, deceive you. Uh, you give your money freely. And then when you decide to leave, you just leave. But all of a sudden, when we come over here, and as soon as you get something in your heart or your mind, um, no, no, I, I know what it is, it's a spiritual attack. See, this man is a schizophrenic. Um, and, and most of you don't know him, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and let Sister Carol say what she needs to say on this, um, because this guy said that, uh, he's talked to you, um, honey, is that true? No, sir. No, sir. And, um, and he says that he's got an approval from you to come to the ministry. Is that correct? No, sir. Um, what was the last time you talked to, to Brother Ron? Um, we met him first in Hawaii and then he came to the land, uh, one time, I believe it was last year sometime, but... Uh, me speaking with him was probably bless you brother, which is about all I would give a brother. Pretty much so. So, and, and that's right. We met him in Hawaii, Sister Carol, uh, there in Hawaii. Uh, we, we made a trip there and he knew he was coming. So apparently he travels back and forth there. And so he actually stayed with us a few days. I tried to spend some time with him, talking with him, trying to help the brother out. He came to straightway once um, after Hawaii. Is that correct? Yes, sir. He came to straightway once after Hawaii. And, um, and the brother and try to help him. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. He's been diagnosed as schizophrenic. He's been locked up in the mental institutions a few times. And, and so, you know, I, I, his family assumed that this would be a good place to, to help deliver him. Anyway, he gets here to straightway and um, and he becomes very confrontational with the brothers. And, and, and as a matter of fact, driving back from the airport, um, the brother is trying to help and assist this man. He's text messaging him and telling people don't say nothing to him. So anyway, he gets all disgruntled, didn't make it too much to Sabbath service. He takes off and starts walking down the road. Am I telling the truth? That's correct. And the next thing you know, we get a report that, that um, um, the city of Lafayette has him locked up in the jail. And he's going literally stalk raving mad inside the jail cell. Is that right? Yes, sir. Um, his mother called, wondered where he was and because we couldn't get in contact with him. And, and they called us because he mentioned our name, like many of you people do. I tell y'all mention our name when you act crazy and get disgruntled and, and you're offended, uh, whatever it may be. Um, and then his mother called and, and we told him exactly where he was. So she flew down here and then flew him back home. Next thing you know, he has Plum Line Ministries. He's a self-appointed pastor. This is after his third or fourth time being locked up in a mental institution. So anyway, now he's talking about he's going to come here to Straightway, drive up here. He's going to take a taxi. He's going to be in Nashville. And, and, and that he's going to come and sit right next to Sister Carol and have some fun. Now, let me say this. Um, 
many of you people out there have to be very careful because there are Israelite brethren that love myself and love my wife, Sister Carol, as a mother. And they, they don't know this man like we do. They don't know this man like we do. And we don't know too much about him except the two times that we've met him, yes, sir. Uh, which is not too much at all. But when you get people out there starting to try to drag Sister Carol into this and trying to talk about what they're going to do and sit next to Sister Carol, not only are you going to have me to contend with, but you have a whole nation of Israelites from Washington State to Australia, California, New York, Florida, Canada, um, I, I mean, from all over the world, that they literally take offense. They watch these things, and they are very protective of myself, the ministry, and Sister Carol. And see, in this nonsense, you people have to understand, it's not going to stop anytime soon. We are dealing with a generation of mental illness, no doubt about it, because you can't, people can sit there and run their mouth, they can get on that telephone, they can do whatever they can to spit in your ear, to try to persuade you, put false information in your mind to get you to, to think a certain way. After all, that's what the system does through, our, through a systematic education, so-called education. They train you, and, and they know that when they put information in your mind, your mind is going to go a certain way, and you're going to respond a certain way because you already come pre-programmed whether you like it or not. And this type of accusation, this type of accusing and stuff, because see, if unless we get out here and contend it, and I'm not going to contend every single accusation, all you have to do is just do what I told you to do a long, long time ago. When people start making accusations against myself, the ministry, my wife, or anybody else associated with the straightway truth, all you have to do is peer into the lives of the ones that are making the accusations, and you will see and know everything you need to know. Is that right? Yes, sir. So tell me, Sister Carol, tell me, honey, what do you think about um, situations like this? I mean, um, what do you think about the, these, these people that, that do stuff like this? And, 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 and his brother Ron, as well as other people um, who at one time was associated with the ministry, and now they get disgruntled and they take off and, and they leave and they start making, uh, they start bearing false witness, start making disparaging comments and stuff. What can you say to the listening audience out here on YouTube to try to help recover some of these offenses in their minds that some of them may even entertain. I think it's very sad because you being a deliverance minister, mm -hmm. when people come here, they're able to get deliverance. They're able to have us minister to them one-on-one, -on -one, whether they be women or men, whatever uh, health problems, whatever spiritual problems, anything that they have going on in their life. We offer ourselves, we give of ourselves, we stop what we're doing so that we can take time and make the time to work with them. When they don't use that opportunity, I, I see a whole host of demons that sets in. I've seen uh, bitterness. I've seen envy. I've seen all kinds of spirits that people have allowed to come in because they wouldn't, they're jealous or something's wrong or they have things in their past that keep them bound. And when they don't take the opportunity to get the deliverance that they could use, this is what happens. So it, I think it's really sad. It, it is a sad situation. Now, mind you, I got Sister Carol, I mean, she just came out of the bedroom and said, I said, come on over, you can do a video. So she just woke up this morning, both of us had, okay? Um, so we, we're catching us at very early in the morning, but we think that it's very important that we put videos out like this because there are a lot of people, and I'm going to say it again, that has come by way of this ministry, and they have met us once, maybe twice. They don't know us. And then there are some out there that has actually been affiliated, associated with this ministry for quite a few years, few years. But ask us what type of people were they when it comes to being a brother or sister. Is that right? Yes, Rather than just taking one side. You know, the law says um, one witness shall not rise up against another witness, but out of the mouth of two or more witnesses, let every word be established. And, and, and what happens is you get all these people networked together because they have some type of fences. But listen real close, because you never, ever hear these people mentioning what was the sin or what was done to them. You never hear that. You never hear. All you hear is a, 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 a things that they they have come up with. Um, and you can tell they don't want to walk in love because they're not willing to sit at the table and discuss these things because I've learned this over the years. 
that anytime someone is guilty of something, the last thing they want to do is be exposed. That's the reason why they only have one side of the conversation because they're hoping to sway the minds of all you people who have unsuspecting minds because there's some of you out there that has been listening to the ministry for quite some time. And you have to understand, if Jesus didn't have everybody speaking favorably of him in his day, and he says, woe unto you when men speak well of you, what, what makes you think that people are going to love me? Uh, especially when I start playing around in their backyard and start exposing the sin and the iniquity and the transgression that's going on in this generation. But I will tell you this, an attack verbally on my wife is an attack on me. And I'm going to tell you right now, you start lying on her. It's one thing to lie on me. You start lying on her. You start dropping her name and stuff. I pray to y'all that whoever you may be, you come that you make it to the gates of straightway. Because I am going to unleash death, terror, and hell upon you, signed by me myself. I am the one that's going to take care of the situation. And um, I know most of you people don't understand it, but I am a man. Not only am I a pastor, but I'm also a man. And, and that's becoming um, a hard thing to define in this emasculated, sensitive, wicked generation where all the men hide behind the pants, which is a bad thing to say, and the skirts of their wives. It's a sad situation. And um, I don't care. You can call yourself schizophrenic. You can be diagnosed mentally ill. Um, or you can think yourself to be a prophet or something like that. I don't mind you talking about me. I don't mind because it's all going to come out anyway When because you never see any of these people fellowship with each other after they get finished getting together and they little powwows and they get on the phones trying to evilly affect all the saints that are in good standing with the Father. But when you start messing around in my home and you start messing around with the people, I'm a shepherd and they are y'all's lambs and sheep. We got some serious trouble. We have some serious, very serious problems and that's when I start taking it personally. Um, now, I don't have to worry about any threat whatsoever at all because these people use social media networks and they use YouTube and, and other outlets to vent out their foam and shame. But what is amazing to me is how that some of you people love listening to this mess. It's, it's sad. What do you have to say about people who love listening to stuff like this? It is really sad. I think that um, idleness of time and idleness of mind, Satan has done a masterful job with people not having enough to do or unemployment. It's something to the nature because if people, they, you, they have so much, you have so much control over them, they just can't let go and go on with their lives. It's, it's the sign of the times. It's amazing. It literally is. Turn the page. <laughs> That's the old saying we have around here, but we just, I'm going to play this video one more time in case, you know, your mind needs to be refreshed and stuff. But Pastor Fox, um, dear brother and friend of mine, um, he, he sent us by the way this video and he titled, Who is this fool? <laughs> All right. But anyway, I think we've said enough. I think you get the picture here this morning. And I'm sure that many of you will agree with my sentiments. It's just a sad situation. I will say this again. And I want you to listen to me very closely if you can. There may be a lot of people out here that are grandstanding and stage playing and will literally get on from it, get on this camera and literally put forth a circus in front of your eyes. They will accuse me of all kinds of things. But there's not a one of them can lay any sin to my charge that I have personally done to them. <clears throat> That's a big statement. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's a big statement. Um, these people are offended. And, you know, if you choose to be offended about something, why does everybody, why, why does everybody have to hear that? Why does people have to agree with your offense? That's the reason why that Jesus told us, if you're offended with your brother, then you go to him and him alone. If you can't rectify that, then you bring in another witness. These are the righteous steps. Read your Bible. And if you can't 
solve it between you and another witness and stuff, then then bring it before the assembly. That's the word. That's the word, right? Yes, sir. And that way all the assembly can see. That's like the last thing we bought before the assembly. Everybody got to see, get the funny brand out of the well. They got to see exactly what's going on with these people. Another schizophrenic. I tell you, it's just another man full of schizophrenia as well as the whole entire family. It's just crazy. Um, and, and But I understand this is part and parcel of, of a walk. This is part of it. This is, I understand. I believe you may understand. And I embrace it and wear it like a glove. Never ever to run from anything. But um, I, I, I tell you what, with the way things are going today, you better believe that everything that goes on in this life is going to cater to the weakness of your flesh. And the only thing that's going to save you in the midst of this wicked and perverse generation is you being able to know what the word says and live by it. I mean, really hide it in your heart and live by it because you cannot trust in your own heart, nor can you trust in the heart or the so-called testimony of others. You know, it's amazing. Testimony is about how you overcome. But these people will get on here and say, we have a testimony. And that testimony is about all these offenses that they have amassed among themselves. And then, of course, they're talking about how they are overcome. And they're looking to amass a network of people to actually try to stop the work of y'all. Now, let, let's do this last part of this, this, this resume right here. I'm a man that preach and teach and live a separated life. Just like you will read in the book of Acts, the apostles, you'll find very few men, very few pastors, preachers, and teachers that would actually open up that Bible, read what the book of Acts say, and tells you exactly how we should live. You'll see very few men that are actually doing that today. I'm one of them. I live a separated, sanctified life. I work very hard. I don't, I don't have the luxury of sitting behind a desk all day long. I work very hard. These hands... Have, have labored very, very hard uh, throughout life. Uh, I'm a provider, a true provider. I'm a shepherd, a true pastor to the people. Um, I don't have time for all this stuff. I really, truly don't. Um, I heal the sick who want to be healed. I cast out devils. I do all the things that the Bible says, every bit of it. And again, you people out there, I, my advice to you is start challenging these people on their accusations. And you're going to find out what spirit they are of because the Hasatan is not trying to get me. I mean, he, he I'm only, uh, like Paul said, hurt in part. That's it. The reason why they say all these things is because they're hoping to evilly affect your mind and they're hoping to get you because the offense is is that there are people out there that are saying things to get you to not listen to the ones that you should be listening to. That's the definition of an offense. Again, pay careful attention of these people's manner of life, their lifestyle. Listen to what they say. Listen to every word. But make a rational, informed decision. There are, there are women out here. You, you watch the videos. Um, that at one time, they were associated with, with the ministry, whether it be long distance or close. And you watch them on these videos. You never see the men on these videos saying everything. And if you ever see them, guess whose voice is out front? Guess who's dominating the whole entire situation? I'm Guess who? I, question mark, guess who? It's remarkable. It's utterly amazing. You people be careful because your soul is at stake. And Satan is dependent upon the fallen nature. And you agreeing with it and banking with it in order to capture your soul. You have any last part and comments? Um, saints, just love the Most High and keep keep all the evil out of your ears. Don't, don't go to these videos to watch. If someone's disgruntled, obviously that's not something that's going to feed your soul. That's something that's there to try to tear your soul down, to try to rip you away from the most high so just don't go to them there's there's a pool or a draw or something that i think that people get that makes them want to see contention and want to be in to listen to all those things but if if you just avoid it i believe it's probably a temptation for some but if you just avoid it you'll keep your soul hallelujah all right ron 
little man, I can't stop you from coming. You can come. Um, but I can't stop you at the gate. Um, and I hope that whatever spirit you have messing around in your head, I hope that you don't bring those spirits to the gates of the Israelite heritage of straightway. Y'all have a blessed day. I hope we say something to stimulate your thought. I really truly do because I tell you, this world is going to stalk raving mad. So.